അസിസ്റ്റന്റ് പ്രൊഫസർ ഇൻ ദ ഡിപ്പാർട്ട്മെന്റ് ഓഫ് ഡേറ്റ സയൻസ് അറ്റ് ഇന്ത്യൻ ഇൻസ്റ്റിറ്റ്യൂട്ട് ഓഫ് ടെക്നോളജി പാലക്കാട് ഇന്ത്യ ആൻഡ് ഹിസ് ഡോക്ടറേറ്റ് ഡിഗ്രി ഇൻ പി എസ് ഡി ഇൻ മെഷീൻ ലേണിംഗ് ഫ്രം ഐ എസ് സി ബാംഗ്ലൂർ ആൻഡ് അറ്റ് ദ സൂപ്പർവൈസർ ചിരഞ്ജീവ് ഭട്ടാചാര്യ ആൻഡ് ഹി വർക്ക് ബ്രോഡ്ലി ഇൻ പ്രിൻസിപ്പിൾസ് ആൻഡ് അൽഗോറിതംസ് റിലേറ്റഡ് ടു സെവറൽ മെഷീൻ ലേണിംഗ് ഏരിയാസ് ആൻഡ് മോർ പ്രിസൈസ്ലി ഓൺ പ്രൈവസി അവയർ ലേണിംഗ് ആൻഡ് ലേണിംഗ് ഫ്രം ബിഗ് ഡേറ്റ ആൻഡ് ബേഷൻ മോഡൽസ് ഹി എൻജോയ് ദ ഹാർഡ് മാത്തമാറ്റിക്സ് പ്രോഗ്രാമിംഗ് ആൻഡ് റിയൽ വേൾഡ് പ്രോബ്ലംസ് ദാറ്റ് എൻകൗണ്ടർ ഇൻ ഹിസ് റിസർച്ച് ഹി ഇസ് വൺ ഓഫ് ദ ഫൗണ്ടിംഗ് മെമ്പർ ഓഫ് ദ പാലക്കാട് മെഷീൻ ലേണിംഗ് ഗ്രൂപ്പ് ആൻഡ് ക്രെറ്റ്സ് സോ ദാറ്റ്സ് ഇറ്റ് സോ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ബ്രീഫ് ബ്രീഫ് ഇൻട്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഫ്രം ഫ്രം മിനാൽ കദേദാസ് ആൻഡ് സോ we can start our session sir yeah platform is yours sir. okay thank you so much so let us start so uh, for the audience i think uh, they are all able to see my screen right and can hear me as well right i think so but sir yeah. can you respond on so i think uh, they are yes sir കാർട്ടൂൺ പിക്ച ഫോർവേഡ് so the chat gpt is like uh, has become very popular uh, ever since it has come out uh, so there are more than 100 million users now over 1 billion visits per month in the app and one of the fastest growing consumer app in the history so this is uh, very very uh, exciting from the deep learning and machine learning community side Uh, so i will take the questions from the non technical side like uh, what are the drawbacks of chat gpt and other ethical issues etc if there is any uh, but let us look at the technological side of chat gpt first okay so i hope all of you know or have heard of what is chat gpt so if you it is basically a question answering system so if you type in chat gpt so it will give you the answer for example Hello. I'm using chat gpt so i'll just uh, move on to the chat gpt site and i'll give you yeah so for example here i can here i type like what is chat gpt so like that we can get answers to any questions that we type for example let us ask what is machine learning so what are the exciting aspects of chat gpt one aspect is that it can write answers in a very nice format okay and the answers are quite comprehensive and also very much useful so it has become very handy now if you compare this uh let us go back to the slide so if you compare this with the standard google search like this so you get various kind of information okay but sometimes you want to know about some specific information that time it becomes a bit of more work going from the search engine to that part okay so chat gpt is solving that problem for us now there are various uh, media articles around chat gpt like chat gpt can understand the language and it can comprehend etc but uh, some of them are true and some of them are not okay to be frank so what we'll do is that we'll go inside and we'll try to understand how it works and probably you yourself will understand what it can do and what it cannot do right so yeah some of these questions i uh, put for you so think about can chat gpt really understand language so you'll have some understanding about chat gpt before this session and let us revise what you understand through the session and whether your answers change right so can chat gpt create some text whose content does not overlap with any existing document 
so the question is that how chat gpt get the answer right so is a very large deep learning model which is trained on all possible text available in the internet now suppose you have some private document and if you ask question on that will chat gpt be able to answer think about this okay can chat gpt learn language for example can chat gpt answer questions in tamil or any other language right so what are the limitations and what are the powers of chat gpt so that will be the some of the things that i'll discuss you'll be able to you'll be able to understand on those aspect okay and as i said feel free to stop me any time because uh, this is covering a very wide topic and i'll be in the parts and as focus on uh, the core technical part of it okay so some of these relevant questions are here like what is gpt in the chat gpt have you thought about it so what is the technology behind it so and how does it work so if you type the question and the answers are coming then how it really happening what is the mathematics behind it so what are the things that it can not do if you ask questions can it answer all the questions so what lies beyond chat gpt is the chat gpt like a big success from machine learning point of view excuse so me sir so what lies yeah yeah sir can you be be little louder sir okay okay just a minute is it better now Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, fine. So, yeah. yeah. okay. Vikas, you're okay, okay, fine. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, whatever I've covered so far. Yes, sir. 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 got the answer or whether your perception towards this kind of models have changed or not whether you have really got the core idea so you are like the students of machine learning or deep learning and so you should have some more insight than common man who are using chat gpt right so that is my objective of this talk so you get some bit and piece of chat gpt so that you know little bit more than average people who are using chat gpt okay so let us go forward what is language model so the title of the talk is that transformers and large language models right so so lang let us start with language model what is a language model the lang language model is like in a simple words it takes an input text and generate sub some sequence of words so if you give a text as input it will give text as output okay that is a language model and how it can be done so let's look at this equation so suppose you have the words w1 to wm minus 1 for example you can these words like can be that i saw the red car okay then what can be the next word so that next word can be like i saw the red car under the tree something like that okay can it predict the other words so and if you see the right hand side so in that can see my cursor i not sure is my cursor visible so in the uh, in the right hand side you see there are two terms one is with the exponential and another is just before that okay so the term 1 by z is a kind of normalizing constant so if you ignore that the actual term is inside the exponential function where you'll see one f and f is taking the words as input okay so this function f is the main thing and how we implement this function f determines what kind of language models we are using so traditionally the f was implemented using statistical models like you count the probability of the words using this conditional probability or something and based on that you generate or devise one language model now in recent times this f has been implemented by neural networks like recurrent neural network lstm 
and those things, which was found more useful than standard statistical models. Now, very recently, we have seen that some new technologies have come, like transformers, which have outperformed all the existing methods and is very, very powerful. Not only that, this model is very big, big in the sense it has billions of parameters. So, and it has the capability to learn from the entire internet. So that is why it is becoming so powerful. And one of the core technique behind chat GPT. If you can see this from Wikipedia, just look at the text inside the red box. So as of 2023, transformers have both statistical and recurrent neural networks in this task. So language model now state of the art is transformers. And chat GPT is a language model. So if you have to understand what is chat GPT, you have to understand what is transformer. And that is what we are going to do in the coming slides. So what are large language models? Large language models are language models, of course, but they are large in the size. That means there are many parameters. Generally implemented by neural networks and current state of the art is the transformer architecture. Some examples are BART, GPT, this kind of models. This is the basic knowledge graph that is required to understand large language models or chat GPT. So it starts with the basics like probability linear algebra optimization, then comes machine learning, supervised learning, and then neural networks, FNN, RNN, LSTM, backpropagation, then come attention transformers, and after that we can only understand LLMs. Now, I do not have the time or scope to cover the entire path. So I'll just focus on the box in the red, attention and transformers. And I expect that you have the other three boxes already in your pocket to understand this red block. And I'll connect this attention and transformers to the large language models. So I'll touch upon FNN and RNN to make it a bit complete. But in case you have some doubt in any other blocks, please feel free to stop me. OK? So what is the neural network? So neural network is, I mean, many of you already know, is the backbone of deep learning, can be trained with backpropagation. Backpropagation is a phenomenal algorithm, is extremely efficient, and one of the main reason behind the popularity of deep learning. The other reason being the GPUs, OK? The neural networks are very easy to configure. Easy to configure means you can increase the width or depth and change the nonlinearity of the function. You can use suitable loss function, and various kind of data forms can be used. And all that can be taken care of by the magnificent backpropagation algorithm. So you don't have to do anything. So this is very, very exciting. In traditional scenarios, when you come up with a new model, you also have to come up with the solution, how you can train the model. Now, because of backpropagation, these things have been streamlined and have reduced the burden from the scientist that you can come up with a new model, which will be suitable for your data, but you don't have to worry how to get the learning done. Okay. So, but Given the student of machine learning or deep learning, we should not be happy with that. We have to, I mean, we should try to understand how it goes in, inside and how backpropagation really works, et cetera. So I will encourage you to go through those details maybe later some point of time. In comes recurrent neural network. So the picture that you see here is called fit forward neural network. Okay, this so from there are three layers you can see here: input layer, hidden layer, and output layers. And the nodes are connected only to the next layer. Now they are not connected within the layer. So information goes only forward. That's why it's called fit forward. Okay. Then comes recurrent neural network, which is a modification of FNN, where we do not have this 
full connections, but here is a recurrent relationship. So it, this kind of models are very useful for text. So you have a sequence of words and the words can be processed through the same model. Same model in the sense the parameter is same, but it can give outputs, okay? The recurrent neural networks have some drawbacks, like it can, it can forget and the long-term dependencies cannot be learned. So there is a reason for that. I, I just keeping that part, but LSTM was proposed to remove the drawback. So it, LSTM has a specific structure using gates, which can solve the problem of RNMs. So LSTM has been the state of the art for a long time till transformers came. Okay. So it is very nice idea to understand how LSTM works. Maybe you can look at that later. Now from here, we start with the trans, uh, translation or question answer kind of systems. Okay. So what we do is that we put a sequence of LSTM. So you, here you see the blue LSTM and the red LSTM. And they are double layers. So what blue LSTM is doing is that it accepting the sentences in one language and the LSTM is generating the sentence in another language. For example, it can be English can be the input and Hindi can be the output or Tamil. The same model can also be used for the same language for question answering systems. Okay. So I mean, if you have a question answering system based on LSTM, the primary structure of that model will be something like this. But it also has some limitation. It suffers from long-term dependencies. Although LSTM can solve long-term dependency problem of RNN to some extent. But real life we have now comes at is and rescue so that's a very important topic which came very recently so i'd like to check if uh i am you're, you're able to hear me and seeing the slides right rahul can you confirm yes sir Yes, yes, sir. But uh, frequent disconnections will be there. Uh, may feel right. Oh, uh, a few yeah, few yeah. times the uh, break breaking is there. Voice breaking is there. Uh, yeah, network the, issues okay. will be there. Yeah. No, no. If if something yeah. like that is Fine. there, let yeah, me yes, let sir. me revise. Uh, give a revise. Whatever I've said so far. So far, I have said is that. We have to deal with neural networks if we have to understand transformers. And why you need to understand transformers? Because transformers are the backbone of the large language models. And large language models are the recent sensation like chat GPT. Okay. So when you start with neural networks, there are the basic fit for neural networks, then the variant of recurrent neural networks for text kind of data. And recurrent neural networks had some issues. So we had LSTMs to solve that. And by using LSTM, we can build models for question answering system or translation system in this way. Okay. But LSTMs are also not good enough. The one problem if you notice here that the last node from the LSTM is going to the red LSTM. Okay, so this blue LSTM is called encoder and the red LSTM is called the decoder. The decoder is generating the sentence and encoder is accepting the sentence. So this encoder is accepting the question, for example, and the red LSTM is generating the answer. Now, if you see the structure of this model, the last block is going to the decoder. Sorry, last block of the encoder is going to the decoder. Okay, so it has the other blocks. May the first block may be more relevant to answer the questions, but it is little bit far. Okay.
okay the by far i mean that if you understand back propagation that the weight of the first block will be less compared to the fourth block given this kind of sequential structure so that is the problem of lstm which is getting solved using attention so attention is a very very recent and exciting topic and if you have seen the paper on transformer the title was that attention is all you need okay so transformer is something that is built on top of this idea of attention so what is attention attention says that instead of looking at the last block alone you look at all the blocks okay and take a combination of them basically weighted average kind of thing you can think of in simple words which will be your c okay so h are my the hidden states for these blue encoders and i all of them contribute to this context vector c okay and that has been used to generate the word from the decoder side so if you look at the equations in the right hand side of the slide so what is h h is coming from this tan h is the activation function and wc is my weights so from that it is generating the ht tilde okay so context and the current state is used to generate ht tilde and then from ht tilde i can generate the word so this is the traditional lstm model okay now in case of attention this c is combination of all the hidden states if you look at the red block okay that sum over j alpha j j okay then how this alphas or a's are computed is based on some similarity score now similarity score you can design yourself so what it is trying to do is that which block or which input will be more relevant to answer the current word that is what attention is so in simple words put attention to all the context and all the words in even in the past not only the last word that is what the idea of attention is so if you look at this diagram so here the animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired okay now here the word eat which one it refers to the animal or the street or the other words are also there okay so that's why the attention says that so you have to put weight on all the edges which is going from e to all the words in the sentence then you compute the relevance which will be more relevant to answer the correct current word if you think from this point of view then uh, this is a question for you to think about what is the difference among connections between any two layers in fnn cnn rnn and attention okay so just try to think about these questions offline so if attention is something that is connecting all the previous words is it same like fnn or is it like rnn or cnn okay or what are the differences so if you can figure it out let me know you can email me so then it will be very clear to you how attention works now based on that we come to the transformers so what transformers are doing transformers are like there will be some input sentence in some language and there will be some output sentence in other language so this is the simplest block diagram of the transformer so this input can be the question and the output will be the answer if you want to build the question answering system now you can think this transformer chat gpt like this transformer the example that i was showing so there will be question as input and the answer will be the output okay there is a question no professor you can continue yeah okay okay now let us zoom in so inside transformer there are encoders and decoders the input sentence goes into the encoder 
and the output sentence is coming out of the decoder okay and there is a connection between encoder and decoder so this is also same as that lstm model that i was showing you there is encoder and decoder the input sentence is going into the encoder lstm and the output sentence is coming out of the decoder lstm okay so so far so far it is same as the lstm sequence to sequence kind of model hmm let us zoom in further so this is a diagram from the original paper of transformer so here you can, uh, there are three parts okay the first part we focus on that so if somebody is typing any question uh, okay. No, professor. No, we can continue. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was hearing some sound. Okay, so uh, let us look. Let us first understand the first block. So a first block shows the entire diagram of the transformer. We'll go through this one by one, and it has many components. Okay. This is the encoder decoder side of the transformer. So the left hand side block the shaded block is the encoder okay and the right hand side block is the decoder so the input goes into the encoder and from that it getting processed and then it is going to the decoder side and from the decoder side the output is coming out okay now you can see many terms here like multi head attention add and norm input embedding positional encoding etc so we'll discuss all these terms one by one so the idea is that if you understand this block then you understand what transformer is okay now the encoder block is something like this the input is coming through this arrow is going through a self attention block then it is going to a feed forward neural network and then it is coming out so you can right hand side you can see the detail picture now instead of self attention there is multi head attention now i'll come to multi head attention later what is self attention the self attention is same as what i was showing you that time let me see yeah so self attention is something like this so you put weight on all the words in the input to get the combined vector okay now from encoder side the information goes to the decoder and in the detail picture also you can see that there are this processing at the end is going to the decoder so you have encoder and we have decoders okay now let us understand what is self attention in the encoder so now you can see there are three sentences x1 x2 x3 now this x1 x2 x3 how they are going inside the encoder they are not the words that are going inside the encoders so here i am assuming that there are vectors so x1 is a vector x2 is a vector and x3 is a vector then how do you get the vector because you have the text from that you have to get some embedding of those vectors that for that you can use any other model like what to vec or some other model you get the vectors and then this vector is going as input to the self attention block this is the first block in the encoder now what self attention is doing is computing the weighted average of all the three words x1 x2 x3 and generating z1 z2 z3 okay then z1 z2 z3 are going to the feed forward neural network and after that is going out of the encoder now there is a question see if there is a weighted average of x1 x2 x3 then will z1 z2 z3 be same or different okay so they will be different because the weights for combining x1 x2 x3 to generate z1 will be different from the weights to generate z2 from x1 x2 x3 the weights are different 
and that makes this j1 j2 j3 these vectors are also different okay then whatever is coming out of the encoder block we can send it to another encoder block because you see in the bottom we have x1 and x2 these are vectors and from the feed forward neural network what comes out is also a vector so the same vector if the sizes are matching we can send it to the another encoder block so that way we can stack multiple encoders that is another beauty of transformer so that in a simple manner we can increase the complexity of the model so we can we can stack many encoder blocks 1 2 3 4 5 multiple encoders okay now there is something called query key value attention is is a is a variant of attention model so how it works so this, this is the animation so let let me go to the next picture So let's say there are three vectors. Okay, now you can see. Now you, you can start to compute yourself to do this. So this from this input vector, we can get the key and value both. Okay. For each input vector, I get two vectors. One is key, another is value. How? So you multiply this vector with some matrix to get the key and another matrix to get the value. Okay. so after you get the key and values then there is a query vector on the query vector you compute the similarity between query and key to get the score okay which is in the blue block then value is multiplied by that score to get the the output okay so this is a kind of attention because you are using all the three inputs and you are getting the weights for the query so for the current query which word is most important that is what it is trying to compute using the score and depending on the score it is changing the value okay then after we get the outputs uh, then these are like the output of the attention block is this part clear i mean this is really a bit confusing if you look at if you are seeing this for the first time so how it happens is something like this so i have first the input then key and values are generated key is key is compared with the query to get the score and the score is getting multiplied with the value to get some output vector which are then combined to get the output of the attention block let me elaborate it from using this slide okay so i have two words thinking machines x1 and x2 and the queries are q1 and q2 then how i am getting these keys k1 k2 and v1 v2 by using these matrices okay so i have x x is my input i have two vectors i multiply with wq to get q then wk to get k and wb to get v so same input is contributing to query key and value okay so okay so there might be a question here the query is coming from the input itself so that is why it is called self attention if query is part of the i mean query key and value if all these three are coming from the same input then it is called self attention now if may come to your mind then how question answer is happening the question and answers cannot be part of the same sentence right so we'll come to that that is a little bit variant of the attention model we'll also discuss that so for the first block of the transformer is a self attention and how it is done it is done is this way so this query in is a term is not actually a query but it is the same framework can be generalized so the terms have been chosen like that so after you get the query and there is a key then you compute some similarity and then you get this and then you multiply with that score the softmax function will give you the score 
multiply that with the value vector to get the z vector okay so there is a question in that yeah uh, yeah so professor sugumar is asking is there any relation between the matrices used to generate the key and the value key and value matrices are different so there are three matrices here wq for query wk for key and wv for value so all these three matrices are different and all these three matrices will be learned during the training process so there is no relationship between key and value matrices i mean the way this w and wk and wv okay then we come to multi head attention now what is multi head attention so multi head attention is basically what it is doing is just extending the self attention block and it's creating multiple cell patterns okay so now you can see i have eight heads and there is w i if you look at the equation at the right hand side bottom okay so this q i is my query for the ith head ki is the key for the ith head bi is the value for the ith head and how they are computed so they are getting computed by this weight matrices w i q w i k and w i v okay and together they form head i then you put attention here and then at the end you look at the last equation they are concatenating all of that and putting another matrix to multiply that and get the final attention output okay so why multi head attention is useful so you can see this diagram the right hand side top so different heads can give weight differently and at the end it gives more flexibility so we can i mean this is basically increasing the complexity of the model so depending on if you have more heads it gives more capabilities and another advantage is that so you can parallelize these heads so you can break the vector into small parts let's say there is a uh, 24 or uh, sorry 1000 dimensional vector you break them into 10 heads and then you can parallelly process them and then combine that is also useful to increase the efficiency or the reduce the computation time okay so it works something like this so i have attention head number 0 here and attention head number 1 here so x is my input thinking machine so there are two vectors and all of them are going through two different sets of matrices okay so i am getting q0 k0 v0 for attention head 0 and q1 k1 v1 for attention head 1 okay then i am getting each one z for each head z0 z1 to z7 i have eight heads okay then how i combine them So I concatenate them Z0 to Z7, then multiply with this W0 matrix to get the final Z as output. So this is same as if you use the normal self attention block, you get one Z as output. So using multi head attention also, you are getting one Z as output. So at the output we are matching, but the internally it is giving some more flexibility by using multiple heads. we can increase the efficiency by reducing computation time and we can increase the complexity because we are using more parameters okay but you can run them in parallel that is the advantage we can visualize it again this way that if x is this this green box x is my input and there is a set of matrices which are generic set of queries keys and values and z0 z1 z7 are my head specific vectors and then you can combine them through multiplying by the matrix w0 to get the final z as output okay so i hope this is clear to some extent yeah you can now go back and check again 
what multi head attention actually does in practice so if you use only single head you get one set of weights but if you are using multi head attention you will get multiple heads of weights so different colors you can see the right hand side the left hand side is the single head attention and right hand side is the multi head attention so now the model is has the the flexibility to choose which head is more appropriate okay so we can understand that this is giving more flexibility now comes one important concept called positional encoding now if you see uh, the difference between lstm and the transformer the in the lstm lstm is built on top of rnn okay there is a recurrent relationship that means the words the order of the words are maintained like i saw the red car so saw comes after i car comes after saw like that that order is maintained but when it comes to transformer if you have seen it carefully the, there is no order i we go back see here x1 x2 x3 all of them are going into the transformer in parallel so there is no order here that x2 will be processed after x1 x3 will be processed after x1 and x2 that order there is no order here so this is one of the biggest idea to make transformer more efficient so you can process these words in parallel you don't have to worry about the order but that is something very counterintuitive because in text the order is very important otherwise you'll make mistakes in the grammar so when you see in the chat gpt demo that the there is no grammatical mistake right then how is this handled so this is handled through this excellent idea of positional encoding so positional encoding is doing is that it is giving some coding for each position now this is the first position second position third position like that and this encoding is combined with the input vector before it goes inside the attention block so this positional encoding in some sense captures the positional information so although transformer allows the words to be processed in parallel but it also captures the positional information so this is excellent and how this positional encodings are generated so they are generated by some functions so that there will be unique representation for each position okay now look at this diagram here so this x1 and x2 two vectors is going through the positional encoding then it is going inside the self attention block okay now what we are taking care of we are taking care of the attention we are taking care of the positional encoding okay but the next block is something called add and normalize so what this add and normalize doing let us understand that so if you look at the zoomed picture in the right hand side this add and normalize is doing something called layer normalization okay so this is a technique in deep learning to make the models more efficient so that they can converge faster okay and there is another kind of normalization which is called residual normalization or residual connection okay we'll come to that so what is residual connection so what has been observed that if you look at the diagram on the right hand side so if, if you you have two neural networks here one is 20 layer another is 56 layer okay now the training error for 20 layer is less than the training error of the 56 layer this is counter intuitive because we have more layers more parameters in the model should be more efficient it should do at least as good as the the smaller network right but it doesn't happen because what happens is that if you have more layers so the sum of these layers are so you let's say you have 56 layers and the information is already processed by 20 layer which is sufficient now what are, what the rest of the 36 layers are doing these 36 layers are perturbing that and making it worse 
So to stop that, they came up with this idea called residual connection. So what they are doing is that if you look at the diagram in the left hand side, they're skipping the layer and then connecting back. Okay. So this way, what it it will help. I'm not going into the deep uh, of this, so you can check the paper or you can contact me later. So what it allows is that this fx can be zero. See, if fx is zero, then x is just getting propagated towards through the few, the next layer. Okay. So if the 20 layer is sufficient to learn for the given data, then rest of the 36 layers will just pass it through. Okay. It will not change. Will not make any perturbation. So this is a very nice idea. So the I mean, if you have heard of ResNet model. ResNet model is built on top of this idea. Okay. The transformers also have this kind of structure. So that way you can put, you can keep increasing the complexity of the transformer, but you still have the advantage that it will not deteriorate the performance. So let me pause here for a moment. Let me see if there's any question. Sorry, uh, one question is there. Yeah. Uh, is the position encoding for a token fixed or does it change during training? Positional encoding. So, okay, how it happens is that uh, you have, let's say, 1000 sentences. Okay. And uh, you have 1000 sentences as input and 1000 sentences as output. And you're training the transformer to build that mapping. Okay. Now that during the training phase, you know that what is the input and what is the output. Now, during the training, when this positional encoding is fixed for each position, the first position, second position, third position, like that, it does not depend on the token. So it just gives the information of the position. So if like the current sentence, I have thinking machine. In the next sentence, I have red card. But the position of them, Positional encoding for those will remain same, but the vector is changing. Does it answer the question? Yes. So, yeah. Okay. Positional encoding is just to just an alternative of the recurrent relation. So through positional encoding, we are just capturing the order information. Although we are breaking the order here and processing them in parallel, but somehow we are telling the machine the relative position of the words so that there are no grammatical mistakes. OK, good question. Any any other question? So I feel that I am going, I mean, going through the slides, there are new topics and there are many new concepts. Okay, it may take some time, is but there, okay. Is there any other queries from the participants? You can ask or you can hand raise and unmute in your mic and ask. You can the session taken from the processor. Yeah, I think we can continue. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now we come to the next concept, which is called cross attention. What is cross attention? Now I was uh, talking about this, that if the query key and value are coming from the same sentence, then how the question answer systems is built, right? That is answered through this cross attention. So in the cross attention, if you see this, there is a connection from the encoder to the decoder, okay? So this connection is what is building the cross attention. So query is coming from the decoder side and keys and values are coming from the encoder side. And through that, you are, we are building the cross attention. Okay. So something like this. So you have the input, then we have the embeddings, then we embed with the time signal means the positional encoding, then it goes to the encoder, stack up two encoders, then we get some output, and from that, I get the keys and the values, okay? And these keys and values are getting feed to the decoder side. And decoder side, I have the queries. 
Now, using query key value attention model, we can compute the cross attention. Okay. So here is my query i, and we have already seen the sentences here. Now, based on that, I am computing the attention and generating the words. So that is where the cause attention is happening. Now, what is causal attention? Causal attention is that if you have seen in LSTM, the output side, decoder side, there is also this recurrent relation. Like here you can see that I is generated first, then M is generated, then the next words are coming, right? So it depends on the previous words. But how is that getting handled in uh, transformers? So it is handled through the causal attention. So whichever words are already generated, they put a attention to generate the next words. So that is called causal attention. So if you look into the details of the causal attention, it is similar to the self attention, but the future words are masked. I mean, by masked, I mean that they are not shown. If you apply self attention with the future words masked, then you get causal attention. So that is very useful for the decoder side or the output side. Does it make sense? Now we have covered almost the main concepts. Only thing is remaining how the final output is generated from the vector. So what we get as output through this neural network is a vector. Okay, then it computes the logits, or basically the probabilities for each word in the dictionary. And based on the highest probability, I can choose the word to give as output. Okay, so there is a softmax layer. Now it makes sense, right? So uh, let me see. Before I go further, let me revisit transformers. And sorry, guys. Okay, so let, let's let's see this one here. What it is doing? So input is. So this is the main main block. Let's see whether you have understood all of the blocks. Okay. So input is going into the input embedding. Okay. Then it is getting combined with the positional encoding. Then it is going to the multi-head attention. Multi-head attention is like multiple heads, and each head is doing the self attention. For the self attention, it is doing the weighted average of all the input words. Okay. Then add and norm. So this is the, the two kind of normalization happening: layer normalization as well as the residual connection. So residual connection you can see here. The skipped, okay. The skipped connection is called the residual connection. Then it's going through the feed-forward network. And if you see, there is something called n x. That means the same block can be repeated multiple times. So after that, the output is going inside the decoder block. The decoder side also, in the beginning, there will not be any output. Let's say the first word is generated. Then that word will come as the output embedding, which will be combined with the positional encoding. It will go through the same kind of blocks like masked multi-head attention. Now, this masked multi-head attention is what is called, called creating the causal attention. Then the rest of the blocks are kind of similar. Then I get this vector, which is linearized. And then I have a softmax layer, which will choose me the what to give us output. OK. So we have gone through almost all the key blocks or key components of the transformer. So by looking at this picture, is there any question? So if you have understood this, then you have understood what transformer is. Now there will be some minute details in each of the cases that you need to go and revisit. Okay. But this is the basic idea of the transformer. Now I go forward. I'm I think almost at the end of the session. So here is something called layer optimization. Uh, so what layer optimization is, uh, maybe I can skip this. So it's basically is one of the key component in uh, 
transformer which is uh, is kind of you might have heard batch normalization batch normalization and layer normalization are kind of two techniques to make the neural network learning more efficient okay so, so there are some results on uh, the transformer side that this is a very very powerful model can beat any model and i think that uh, this is older than the chat gpt came so uh, now chat after chat gpt i think we do not need to see this kind of table okay so what i do is that i go over it again to revise this so that you if you have any question just feel free to stop me now Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Chat GPT. I started with the Chat GPT. Chat GPT is a large language model. What is a language model? Language model is a model that can generate words given some words as input. Okay. Now you have seen that how transformer is doing that. So it is. It can be very big model. So that's why it's called large language model, and it is implemented by neural network, specifically transformer architecture. bart gpt these are the some of the common transformer architectures okay and this is kind of your background you need so i am just covering only the attention and transformer here if you the other parts if you can cover i think you can get the more most of the details more or less so fit for a neural network serves the basic structure where you have input hidden and the output layers the input signal is coming and going only forward so that's why it's called feed forward neural network and given the loss function and the training data you can train the weights which is called the learning and you can configure it by increasing the width depth etc and you can also choose a suitable loss function so this is the basic building block of any deep learning model so all the models are kind of variant of it like recurrent neural network where there is a recurrence relation recurrence relation in the sense that it depends on the past this is suitable for text kind of data where the order is important but recurrent neural network has the drawback that it it cannot model long term dependencies because of the vanishing gradient problem relish scheme can solve that problem to some extent by using gates but still it is not able to give emphasis on the older words so where although lstms have been used to build translation models or question answering systems like that using the encoder decoder kind of structure where in the encoder side you give on text as input and decoder side you get one text as output okay so this can be used for translation as well as question answering but the problem of the lstm that it cannot give emphasis on all the previous words attention was proposed attention mechanism the attention mechanism is a beautiful concept which combines all the previous states of the recurrent neural network by using the weighted average concept and this attention mechanism is extended in the transformer in various ways so this is self attention where each word i mean what can be related to something which is the distance past the transformer basically is a similar kind of model of encoders and decoders and encoders and decoders have slightly diff slightly different then each encoder have some components like this input em uh, this positional encoding multi array attention add and normalize fit forward etc okay then we have query key value attentions causal attentions and yeah any question is there any question from shweta ma'am idhar aa idhar aa jyoti ma'am no sir you can continue okay so encoder is i mean input is coming to the encoder from the encoder i get the in information to the decoder and from the decoder i get the output okay then we have the self attention block 
so the inputs vectors are getting weighted average to create intermediate vectors which are getting passed through the feed forward network to get the output of one encoder block and i can stack multiple encoder blocks by just giving the output of the encoder 1 as input to the encoder 2 like that okay then there is a call query key value attention this is a variant of the self attention by using different matrices i can generate key value and query and through that i can combine and make that attention so why this is very useful because this query key values are generated by the matrices called wq wk and wv and these weights can be learned during the back propagation okay and this query key they are combined to get the weight and then they are multiplied by the value vector to get the output of the attention block then there is multi head attention so you can you can parallelly parallelly apply multiple attentions using different matrices which reduces the computation time and also gives more flexibility but you can use the same vector size because at the end by using some concept you can combine these multiple heads together to get the one vector as output multi head attention has this ability that for different uh, cases you can have different heads can be chosen then comes this concept of positional encoding so as we are breaking the order information here and we are solving them in parallel so positional encoding helps us to embed this positional information and this allows to still follow the parallel processing so we have this structure now so we have the input vectors which is going through the positional encoding then we have the self attention block which can be multi head attention also then we have normalized block then neural networks fit forward neural networks then again add a normalized then you can stack multiple encoders and from encoder side the information goes to the decoder side which is called cross attention so from the encoder side i get the keys and values and the query is coming from the decoder side for which query which keys are important which words are important that is decided by this cross attention okay then something comes like causal attention because in the output side also i need to have the sentence in proper grammatical manner so to ensure that i have causal attention so that the words are generated are maintain the order although i do not have the recurrent relation then finally the from the vector output of the decoder side i put a softmax function and i choose the word with the highest probability from the dictionary So this is the layer optimization uh, is just to make the learning more efficient i'm just skipping this part yeah these are some results okay so these these are some quiz time for you so how many types of attention are used in transformer there is self attention multi head attention cross attention causal attention so why multi head attention is useful multi head attention is useful so that i can process them in parallel and what are the main components of transformers main components are the positional encoding the attention blocks the attention in the attention block we have self attention cross attention and causal attention okay that's it so if you have any question just you can ask now or you can reach out to me later as well i'm open for various positions so interested students please reach out to me yeah so let us uh, let us take the q and a session rahul yes sir so um, participants please write your queries in chat box or otherwise you can hand raise and and unmute your mic and ask
it's a very relevant session in um, LLMs. So, uh, participants, those who are working in this area, those who are doing research in this area, please ask your queries and use this opportunity to interact with Dr. Mrinan. Yeah, and you can ask any question, any question meaning not related to LLM or transformer, any machine learning related question or some some other non technical questions around these or anything is fine. Maybe I'll stop sharing. Is a bit. Uh, I hope I'm audible. It's a bit difficult to give such session online because I'm not able to see your reaction. I don't know how much you have got. So I've tried to give a very summarized presentation on the LLMs and transformers. There are many background which are missing, and probably I, I am assuming that most of you are aware of that to some extent. If not, you can go through this again, and if required, you can. Uh, Ask me question later as well. I think some questions are here. I think those are already covered. Okay. It's already covered once, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sure. So, uh, participants, you have any questions, write your queries in chat box. Or you can write what you have understood and what you have not understood in case you do not want to ask something. Mm -hmm. 